Hello, I'm David Basanko. I'm one of the tens of thousands of Kellogg graduates who relished the Kellogg experience, rich in learning, community, and spirit. So much so that I practically never left. When I was a student, times were different. The MBA was called the Masters of Management, and there were fewer students, but the goals of boundless exploration and striving to break through your limits were still the same then as they are now and will be, well, forever. Where we will go is built on where we came from. And this new global hub is a reflection of the intellectual foundation and the extraordinary people who built this unique institution and nurtured its enduring value. By the early 20th century, Northwestern's home, Chicago, had become the country's second largest city and the Midwest's commercial epicenter. It was the nation's most important rail hub, a manufacturing powerhouse with industries ranging from meatpacking to garment making, from electrical machinery to steel. It was a center for industries pioneering new approaches to mass marketing, including advertising and retailing, represented by the giant mass merchandising pioneers, Sears and Montgomery Ward. But Chicago's business community needed more comprehensive knowledge when it came to maximizing opportunities in an expanding economy with ever more complex organizations. Northwestern's president, seeing the need to create a college of business and finance, put it this way, the average businessman is ignorant, inefficient, and cowardly, he said. He is uneducated and untrained in his own business. He is helpless in a crisis. The curriculum soon included finance, banking, insurance, and railroad management. But businesses became more complex and markets grew in size, first becoming nationwide and then eventually becoming global. Kellogg would begin to set the standards for its innovative thinking, its collaborative teaching, and its contributions to the practice of management. New courses introduced students to the subjects of human behavior and marketing. Kellogg leapt into the next decades with its commitment to actionable knowledge grounded in research. This combination of relevance and rigor would define Kellogg's distinctiveness and turn Kellogg into the definitive leader in those fields. One of the things that makes Kellogg a really distinctive place is we were one of the first schools really to emphasize collaboration as a way for students to build their leadership capabilities and to learn from one another. I think what Kellogg stands for first and foremost is an interdisciplinary focus. What set us apart is the vision that you didn't have to come from business or be trained in business. And so that gave a rigor, a theoretical foundation. You take knowledge from fundamental areas. So you hire economists, you hire mathematicians, you hire psychologists, you hire people from all fields, which are not business necessarily, but put them in a class to teach MBAs and executives. And by doing so, they will turn their interest into more applied type of research that will become relevant for business applications, but they will bring in basic knowledge from a wide variety and richer variety of areas and enrich the environment. So what we really have is an increasing specialization. We have enormous numbers of deep expertise who can now come together in collaborations to drive uh, new knowledge. We so fundamentally believe that the collective can build ideas and nurture ideas better than the individual, and it's so fundamental to who we are. Kellogg would take the lead in studying business solutions that evolved through history. From expanding retail and manufacturing practices in the 1920s and 30s, to the problems of wartime in the 1940s, to the emerging need for professional development for executives in the ever more complex global economy, that emerged in the wake of the Second World War, a development that led to the launch in 1951 of the Institute for Management, which served as a model for executive education for universities nationwide. And while the nation was experiencing its own self-reflection in the 1960s and 1970s, Kellogg had its own passion for free thinking with its 10th dean, Donald Jacobs, who inspired the institution for 26 years, beginning in 1975. Jacob's vision embraced innovation and risk-taking, always aimed at making something better. He brought theory and practice together. 
and Kellogg rose to become one of the most esteemed and admired business schools in the world. Don really helped define us as an international school, and this contributed to the intellectual stimulation for teaching. As a visionary, Jacobs created an atmosphere that propelled the marketing department to become an institutional hallmark, full of brilliant minds, pursuing deep research, rich in practical application. He had such an instinct and willingness to bet on people, whether it was Gene Brett on negotiations, whether it was Phil Kotler and telling him he wanted him to work on marketing, whether it was Ehud and all Ehud's amazing colleagues that have been through the halls of Kellogg on game theory and economic theory, Don would find a person and say, I'm betting on them. It was an amazingly successful management leadership strategy that catapulted us to the international ranks. We're here, just outside of Chicago, which by the early 20th century had become the center of mass marketing in the United States. It is fitting, therefore, that Kellogg's contributions to marketing have had a long and distinguished history and have influenced management practice in profound ways. I think a pivotal time came in the 60s when we began to attract people from these other disciplines. The first that I think became a real thought shaper was Sid Levy and uh, very quickly helped the school attract Phil Kotler. Right around that time, a third luminary, Lou Stern, actually graduated from the doctoral program. And I would say the three of them really made it an exciting place. They fed off each other and collaborated on really seminal articles that were published in Harvard Business Review that sort of defined the field of marketing. When Don Jacobs was a finance professor in the 1950s, he met a young economist with a PhD from MIT, and he encouraged him to apply economic analysis to the field of marketing and to apply for a faculty position at Northwestern University. His name was Phil Kotler. Phil, with his ability to do rigorous, more mathematical or quantitative analysis, looked at the textbooks that were available at the time, and they were largely descriptive. And he was inspired to bring more rigor to textbooks and the education then that the MBAs would receive. He wrote his first book in 1967, his marketing management book. If you meet somebody from anywhere around the world and they know anything about marketing, they know Phil's book. It's phenomenal, the impact that book has had. It's kind of like the Bible, if you will, and its impact on the field of marketing. While Don Jacobs was working to build a world-class marketing department, he was, at heart, an economist, and he knew the importance of analytics. The 1970s saw the school flex its analytical strength with the founding of the Managerial Economics and Decision Sciences Department, or MEDS. Outstanding scholars created new frameworks rooted in economics, mathematics, and especially game theory. So game theory exploded largely because of the research that was done in the meds department. And this was a fantastic group of senior faculty. They were very smart, visionary, open-minded, and the impact of the work was so substantial. Actually, Kellogg became the most exciting place in the world for anybody who's interested in strategic interaction and information and things of this type and just it became a dream place to be for anybody like me. By the time the school changed its name to the Kellogg Graduate School of Management in 1979, following a $10 million gift from the John L. and Helen Kellogg Foundation, both the marketing department and meds were well on their way to establishing their world-class reputations. And the work of scholars in those departments was seeding developments of fields that would become important in the 21st century, including data analytics, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. My job over eight years was to take what Don created and sort of pivot, polish Kellogg to work even better for the 21st century. And in order to do that, we had to take all these centers and begin to think what are some of the bigger overarching themes across them? And how do we take those themes and bring people together across all the departments, not just one or two departments, in ways that could foster more innovation? We needed more innovation 
in data analytics. We needed more innovation in entrepreneurship and innovation. We wanted to have more to say about the public-private interface. And we really had to figure out what was our story about collaboration and leadership going forward. And I think that idea of creating new human technologies for continuing to foster innovation in new ways at Kellogg was really important. Kellogg is a big supporter of what's called the Data Science Initiative, which is essentially bringing the best minds from around the world to come here and work for two years on projects with faculty and one another to really push the boundaries of this whole area. So I think once you put together what the faculty are doing, and then you put that together with the MBA program and the undergrads and the graduate students in other departments, the initiative here at Kellogg is probably the best and most advanced of any other business school in the nation. One area where Northwestern and Kellogg have become, I think, world leaders in the last decade is in understanding the creativity aspect of science and technological progress and really mapping things down to teams, collaborations, networks, using those tools to understand what good creativity is, understand what kinds of organizations succeed or fail when it comes to this ever and more important task of both innovation and absorbing technological change in the environment. Kellogg's Global Hub opens the next chapter in the school's unique and distinguished history. It is the culmination of vision, passion, and a lot of hard work over the last 10 years. Knowing what it took Dean Blount and her team to get this building constructed, surely we will be able to say as a school that we can overcome any challenge in the pursuit of greater excellence. At the same time, the beauty of this building will inspire us. Every day we work, teach, learn, and research here. It is a fitting place to serve as a bridge from Kellogg's remarkable past to its future.